What inspired me to work for democracy were the years of martial law in the Philippines. I was nine years old when by proclamation number 1081, the late dictator Ferdinand Marcos Sr. declared martial law on the 21st of September, 1972. It was the death of freedom and democracy. My father, who was a government official, was extremely worried about the iron fist of martial law's implications to the country. From him, I heard about the incarceration of the late uh, Senator Ninoy Aquino, the late Senator Jose Wright Jocno, the late Senator Jovito Salonga, and the late We Forum publisher Jose Burgos and many others who languished in jail. My father also shared with me about the curtailment of press freedom, the suspension of the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus, and the dissolution of the Philippine Congress. We spoke about these things discreetly because as a government official, he was careful not to say things against the government in public. At nine, I was not fully mature to understand the situation. Neither was I too young not to feel its consequences. The atmosphere of fear was real. Among bits and pieces of information that I gathered in my elementary and high school years are the extravagance of the First Lady Imelda Marcos seen among others in her projects intended to beautify the country was shameful and scandalous. From my home province, there was a massacre in Hinunangan, Southern Leyte. Eight children aged three to 18 were killed by the 357th Philippine Constabulary. Despite the town's proximity to my hometown, the news never reached my home my, ho my townmates, there was secret news about uh, Aimee Marcos' ire against a student activist, Archimedes Trajano. Her anger was caused by the latter's questioning in an open forum of her leadership in the Kabataang Barangay just because she was the daughter of the president. This led Trajano being forcibly thrown out of the forum blindfolded, beaten, and killed. He was later found heavily tortured after a few days. So many torture marks were found in his lifeless body. In response, student activists in Manila staged frequent rallies known as the first quarter storm. Such rallies were faced with truncheons and shields by the police and the military who were supposed to protect the people, the very people they professed to serve. As an elementary and high school student who was taught traditional lessons of social studies and Philippine history, I learned almost nothing about the ills of society. The information I gathered outside of the classroom was fragmented, bereft of in-depth analysis that could have aided a student's profound understanding of society. The 21 years of martial law resulted in the arrests, detentions, torture, enforced disappearances, killings of thousands of people from various sectors of society, the farmers, workers, urban poor, fisher folk, students, church people, teachers, and other professionals and these lasted for more than two decades. From my elementary to college years, I had known only one president, the late dictator Ferdinand Marcos Sr., father of the present Philippine president, Ferdinand Marcos Jr. The horrors of Philippine martial law inspired me to work for democracy. I have recently been introduced to the Asia Democracy Network, or ADN, when I joined the Asian Forum for Human Rights and Development as Executive Director some months ago. 
I believe that ADN is a dynamic network. One very concrete action of ADN and one action that they continue to do is to coordinate various responses of Asian organizations to the arrest and detention of two Bangladeshi human rights defenders, Adil Rahman Khan and Ellen. ADN coordinated the issuance of joint statements, letters to the Bangladeshi embassies worldwide, and encouraged and participated in protest actions in front of Bangladeshi embassies in Asian countries. In the Asian region, characterized by authoritarian regimes, shrinking civic space, and consequent violations of freedoms of expression and assembly, and wanton disregard of human rights, networks such as the Asian Network for Democracy need to flourish and grow to respond to the signs of the times. Against this backdrop, ADN certainly faced and continues to face several cases of persecution, several obstacles, but it perseveres in doing the noble work of promoting and protecting democracy in Asia. On the 10th anniversary of ADN, I would like to congratulate you for the decade-long work that you did and continue to do to champion democracy in the Asian re region. Many tasks cry out to be done. Many challenges need to be overcome to attain democracy, which the Asian peoples and the rest of the peoples of the world truly deserve. Long live the Asian Network for Democracy. Long live human rights and democracy. Thank you very much.